We are back with another FPL video. This time, this is going to be the best bench boost squad for Double Gimmick 29. And because we have 12 teams doubling, we might as well have a kind of limited edition type of video. For those of you looking to use the bench boost, like myself, this would be the ideal 50-man squad. And this will help you with some transfer plans to maybe bring in that last defender, goalkeeper, midfielder, or forward that you need to maximize your gimmick 29 returns and i'll also be talking about a few other players that haven't featured just to give them some honorable mentions because there are so many different options this week but if you end up enjoying this video you know what to do smash the like button subscribe for new and all that good stuff share this as well with those that love fpl too but without further ado let's jump straight into this video and go into the best 50 man squad for the bench boost you may be familiar with Kepra Zabalaga in one of these best wildcard free here and now bench boost teams, but I've also gone for Jason Steele as a really cheap enabler who's got some good fixtures in the double. I know Brentford's a bit tough and they lost the reverse fixture 2-0, but that other game against Bournemouth away looks very enticing. And I know some of you might have some doubts about Steele because Sanchez played in the FA Cup, Brighton won 5-0, and if the Zerbi could easily take Sanchez out, who was an established goalkeeper at Brighton, he could easily do the same with his backup in Jason Steele. But... I am confident he will play both games in 29. If you aren't, though, then you can go for some other goalkeepers who I'll honourably mention right now. The likes of Allison. Yes, he's got two difficult away games and Liverpool have been poor this season, but that hasn't stopped Allison from being one of the best goalkeepers in FPL in this campaign and arguably the best in the Premier League overall. Then you've got a few others like Nick Pope, who withdrew from the England squad due to a knock. I think he'll be fine for Gimmick 29. You've got Ariola with two home games against Southampton and Newcastle. So you've got different choices here and there but I would probably go for these two and let's not forget David Raya yes the fixtures aren't that great but I also wouldn't be surprised if he got six seven points or even more possibly if he can add a clean sheet on top of the saves and bonus points he tends to accumulate as well let me know the two goalkeepers you would go for on the bench boost I've currently got Kepa Zabalaga and Raya I'm very happy with that but if I was just assembling a 50-man squad from the ground up I'd probably go for Steele instead of Raya the biggest change from this squad compared to the wildcard team I talked about is Trent Alexander-Arnold and he does face Man City away and Chelsea away but I'm actually quietly confident of a clean sheet against Chelsea and then Trent you know anything he gets against Man City basically will be a bonus I think Liverpool will lose that game but you never know in football and Liverpool have given Man City some problems in the past and Trent is still a good asset whenever Liverpool keep a clean sheet or he gets an attack in return you know he is in and amongst the bonus points and has a great chance of some massive return so I have gone for him but we can also consider the likes of Zuma as well a second Newcastle defender like Botman and you can also go for other defenders here and there but I think those are probably the best options I know there will be some love for Tyra Minks for example but I don't really see clean sheets against Chelsea or Leicester I think the more likely one actually might be the Chelsea game and Minks is look a decent option don't get me wrong but I'd probably rather go for this five-man defense or the likes of Zuma for example to cover West Ham defensively and you know my thoughts on West Ham overall because they've always kind of promised they've had one big performance and then just not been able to build upon that victory so I'm still skeptical about them but I do recognize the likes of Ariola, uh, Zuma you've also got some midfielders like Ben Rama and Bowen they can offer some decent value and can be good short-term punts now arguably Nottingham Forest have the best double on paper with the fixtures in mind but I don't trust them against Leeds away I think they'll lose that maybe even comprehensively as well and I just can't bring myself to recommend Nottingham Forest defensively and that includes Keylor Navas if you want to go for an Nottingham Forest player and really target those fixtures then I'd probably go for a midfielder like Morgan Gibbs White or a forward like Brennan Johnson who's my favorite Nottingham Forest asset but we'll talk more about that as we get to the other positions then you look at Stupinian yes there's going to be doubts about him missing the first game potentially for Brighton in the double game because of his international duties you can say the same thing about Matoma to be quite frank and I think Stupinian will start both games and of course there's also going to be an argument well why did the Zerbi sub him off at half time he actually said it himself he was very blunt about it he said that he thought Estupinian could play better so look I still think he's a good option I think he starts both games and he gets the 60 plus minutes required to get those hauls and Estupinian is one of the best defenders in terms of recent form if you look at the last seven or eight game weeks and I'm very happy with him so many different avenues for points and Brighton have been very impressive to say the least they can also have a double in 31 if you're looking to also build this team for the long term as well then I've gone for Kieran Trippier he's been a main 
mainstay in all these wild card bench boost and free hit teams but I do recognize that he simply hasn't been good enough and that's five blanks in his last six games with only one return which was an assist against Wolves we need more clean sheets we need those bonus points and those attacking returns once again and his ownership is still so high it's around 66 percent but I would recommend him and if you want any gains from the Newcastle defense then you can go for that second defensive coverage in Fabian Scher, Dan Byrne, Sven Botman or Nick Pope in goal and I've also gone for Luke Shaw and I know Man United have had some iffy moments in the FA Cup you also look at the Premier League for example against Liverpool but apart from those kind of minor missteps and bad performances they've still gotten the job done in most competitions and they've been very consistent since the World Cup and I think Luke Shaw has a great chance of bonus points and assists and I think in terms of the defenders the big question for you is do I cover Man United defensive with Luke Shaw or David De Gea in goal that's another goalkeeper I didn't even mention you can also go for him but I'd rather go for the free outfield players you're going to probably guess who the other two are as well but I would rather go for Luke Shaw over David De Gea but there's not much to separate them I don't think there is and that's something I wouldn't have said earlier in the season the final defender is Ben Chilwell so as you can see we do have two defensive double ups for Brighton and Chelsea I think it is worth it gimmick 29 it would be an issue long term especially in gimmicks like 32 when both Brighton and Chelsea blank not to mention the likes of Estupinian and Luke Shaw so you're going to have some problems going forwards but I think for gimmick 29 this is the best five-man defense and the two best goalkeepers in my opinion it's tough to beat this midfield five and whilst you have alternatives like Rodrigo Harrison, Morgan Gibbs-White, not to mention March and McAllister, I think the only regret with this midfield five is not having that second Brighton midfielder. So if you want to go for that, and that would require obviously removing one of the other Brighton players, I would remove still in that instance, maybe I'd go for someone else like David De Gea, and if you do, you can also change someone like Luke Shaw in the process, and then you can add in Solly March to this midfield, but then who do you displace? And I think the key one might actually be Mohamed Salah, but we can't forget how good Salah's been in in recent weeks my main concern though of Liverpool is their away record so having a double up in Liverpool facing Man City and Chelsea away might not be ideal and even though I back Liverpool to get a result against Chelsea I don't see them scoring too many goals or for the attackers to have such a high ceiling but of course I could be wrong and another thing you have to consider is the conflicts because we've got a double up in Chelsea defensively but we've also got two Liverpool players as well including an attacker so these things you also have to think about and bear in mind but I think Salah is still worth mentioning he's not going to feature in the other teams as well and I think he does deserve some plaudits and also some mentions because he's one of the best FPL assets of all time and he's also one of the highest scoring midfielders this season despite some blips here and there I've also gone for Matoma as always he's my favorite Brighton midfielder but you can also go for McAllister and Solly March I think McAllister is the riskiest of them all because he's going to be in Argentina playing the international games so there is a chance he does miss the first game which you can also attribute to his Stupinian and Matoma as well but I think McAllister will be fine, but it's just something to bear in mind. And Solly March and Matoma might be a bit safer. Arguably, March is the safest, but Matoma is my favorite asset of them all. And I back him to start both games. James Madison as well, two great fixtures, good long term games as well. Apart from Man City and Gimmick 31, he ticks all the boxes and he's so cheap as well. I'm looking to bring him in for my own team selection. So be sure to check that out and see what my transfer plans are to optimize my own bench boost squad. Bruno Fernandes is actually one of the highest scoring players in terms of predicted points in Gimmick 29, even higher than Marcus Rashford according to FPL.team, which is certainly interesting. And Bruno did score a brace against Fulham to mount that comeback. So we all know what Bruno can do. And I think those fixtures are actually well poised for him, not just in 29, but also in Gimmicks 30 and 31. Then to conclude this team is Marcus Rashford. Yes, he's got a knock. He withdrew from the England squad. I think he'll be fine. He'll start both games and he's one of the best captaincy options in Gamut 29 and also in some of the weeks to come as well. I am fully aware of the risk I might be taking to include Ivan Tony in this bench boost squad. So if you aren't aware, Ivan Tony's on nine yellow cards, one more, and he misses the subsequent game. So if he gets the yellow against Brighton in the first game of double gimmick 29, he will miss the second game against Manchester United, and that will be very frustrating. If you don't want to take that risk at all, I'd probably go for Kai Havertz if you're looking for a bench boost squad and you want someone for gimmick 29 specifically. I'll be honest with Havertz, I think he's a good option for 29, two home fixtures, but I don't like him from gimmicks 30 onwards, especially 
because he blanks in 32. He's a rather inconsistent player in the grand scheme of things. And there are other forwards that are just more consistent in general. Now with Ivan Tony, is he someone I want to keep long term? Not necessarily. But I think if he can go for that Brighton game unscathed, he can do extremely well in this double game week. Despite having tough fixtures. And actually, if you look at the reverse fixtures, he did very well. Both against Manchester United in the 4-0 victory and against Brighton where he scored a brace in the home game. So just bear all of that in mind. And I know Brentford don't perform as well on their travels as they do at home but they still can get results and Ivan Tony, irrespective of Brentford's form away from home he always delivers pretty much on the road so I do like him as an option but if you don't want to take the risk you've got a few other choices of course Erling Haaland and Harry Kane for the single game week options not to mention Kai Havertz who's probably my favorite kind of double game week striker besides the three you see on screen Isak was really impressive against Nottingham Forest and to be fair when you look at the amount of goals per minute he's actually been right up there in the FPL and the Premier League should I say this season and also in terms of XG and all these underlying metrics he's got some very impressive stats he's got a lot of big chances as well six goals in 10 games there's a lot to like and some of those appearances do include some cameos off the bench so I like Isak and so long as this I can stay fit, I think he'll be the number one striker over Callum Wilson. So that isn't an issue. But the fitness will definitely be something to keep an eye on. And can Newcastle continue to create chances? And they have looked better in recent Premier League games. But the overall record since the World Cup is quite worrying. So I don't think I'd go for a triple up in Newcastle, despite some good fixtures long term. And they also have a potential double in gimmick 31. But Isak is definitely worth mentioning. And he has a spot in this bench boost team. The final forward is Ollie Watkins. And he's another one that... Doesn't have great fixtures long term, but a decent double in 29 where you can haul in both games, especially against Leicester, and also a plum fiction game with 30 against Nottingham Forest at home. And Aston Villa have the third best record since Unai Emery took over. Only Arsenal Man City have a better record. So there's a lot to like there with the villains, and you could even add a second or third player from their ranks like Tyro Mings. But I think Watkins is enough to be fair, and the fixtures overall aren't that great. And I favor them more from an offensive point of view rather than defensively that's just my opinion though let me know if you disagree and what would you change in this 50-man squad I think some really big names or players that could do extremely well that haven't featured in this 50-man squad include David De Gea I also look at Solly March who could do extremely well and potentially Kai Havertz as well when I look at the defense it's a bit tricky I think to single a single player out but maybe Kurt Zuma someone surprising like that has a big haul in him and it'll be interesting to see who ends up being the highest scoring player in each of these positions if you've got any ideas put them in the comment section down below and we'll see if we can reach some common ground there as well now let's go to fpl.team show you the captaincy and all of that and how the bench would look like but does it even matter it's a bench boost after all every single player will contribute to your final score in double gimmick 29 there's always confusion about squad value and selling prices and all of this and i do try to explain in all of my videos but Basically, in terms of my own squad value, I've got 104.1 million, yet I have 0 0.6 million left in the bank after building this 15-man squad. So as you can see, this team does cost 104.7 million for me personally, but it might differ for you. And also in terms of selling price and all of that, it would be 102.6 million overall. But let's not try to overcomplicate this too much. Let's go into how this would look like. I've gone for a free 5 2 but like I said, it doesn't matter. I've put the likes of Short, Trent, Tony, and Steel on the bench. But remember, you can make some necessary adjustments if you don't feel like a certain player will do that well, or you're worried about Ivan Tony being suspended. You can go for Havertz instead. You can go for David De Gea, or maybe another goalkeeper like Raya in goal instead of Steel. And you can put Solly March in the midfield as well. It all depends, but I have mentioned all the kind of key assets you need. I pretty much much not just listed these 15 that you see on screen but also another five or six that could also easily make their way into the squad and they could also suit your needs and also your predictions for double gimmick 29 in terms of the captaincy i'd still favor rashford but i'm very open-minded towards someone like matoma or another brighton midfielder like solly march and also james madison sal is a decent option and bruno fernandez i think you know if you're looking to chase and you have a good feeling about bruno fernandez why not take a captaincy punt on him I think he's right up there this week in terms of the captaincy list. I'd still rank Rashford a little bit higher, but I might feel a bit differently once we get closer to the double gimmick 29 deadline, especially if something actually rings true behind Rashford's knock and there is a doubt about him starting the first game of double gimmick 29. I don't think that'll be the case, but it's still worth mentioning. And there's going to be some big names that haven't featured in this team overall, like Bakayo Saka, Erling Haaland and Harry Kane. Let's not discount the single gimmick options. They can still do extremely well 
well and if you want to feature some of them in your bench boost team that's completely fine i'll have the likes of harry kane and probably bakayo saka in my bench boost team and they could easily outperform some of the double gimmick players we've covered today or the ones you see in the starting 11 or in the bench here in this 15 man squad so let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below what would you change who are you going to captain and which players are you looking to bring in to maximize your bench boost is there a player i haven't mentioned there's a lot of different stuff to cover in fpl as always but i think this bench boost team will do extremely well and as you can see according to fpl.team the predicted points is 146 which is extremely high let's not put it too lightly that is an extremely high score even higher than what i have on my current bench boost squad i do have a few players like ben me for example and i don't have the likes of salah bruno fernandez and madison all at the same time it'll be a case of getting one maybe two in i'm not going to take massive hits to disassemble my squad to then build this ideal bench boost team i don't think that's necessary but i still think this team is quite achievable especially for those that wild carded around gimmick 26 or 27 and remember if you are playing the wild card this week be sure to check out my best wild card team video but you can't use another chip in the same week you have to wait another week to then use the bench boost or something like that and if you are wild carding now and you still have the bench boost i would use the bench boost in double gimmick 34 which will be the next biggest double gimmick of the season but thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video or found it useful then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's try to get this video to over 300 likes let's keep on pushing towards 20,000 subscribers and beyond you can follow me on twitter and instagram dylan rcm and check the links in the description below for the patron channel memberships discord server and the fpl league all of that stuff is there i wish you all the best of luck for double gimmick 29 and the rest of the season and i'll see you next time <laughs>